directly influence our behavior. You guys know that, right? Why do I say that? What you believe is always translated into your immediate action. So when scripture tells us that if you confess with your mouth, that's that first part, but you need to believe in your heart, right, that, that Jesus is Lord. Right? So this is, that's repentance, is to turn away from, but to also take action in the positive direction. Does that make sense? To start living in the way which God asks us to live. It's not just to say, oh, my bad, my bad. Right? If you turned around and you slap someone in the face, like the person on your left or right, and you're like, oh, my bad. <laughs> right? The first time, they're like, okay, you know what? I'm trying to turn the other cheek. I'll be, you know, godly. And then you're like, oh, really? And you slapped him again, right? Oh, my bad, my bad. That, okay, okay, you know what? Fine. I'll let you slap me one more time, right? And they're like, and then they slap you a third time. What are you going to do? Are, are you kidding me? You, none of your my bads, your sorries meant anything, right? So this, that's the issue. It's that when we say sorry to God, when we repent, that you have to turn away. You have to, oh, my bad, and massage that cheek instead of just... You slapping it. Is that, you guys understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it's not just saying my bad. It's not just saying I'm sorry. It's to take action and say, hey, let me show you the actions that I am actually sorry. I am so actually repentant. And that's the way that we work. It's, and, it, and it's not that like, oh, I have to make it up to God. You're, you're not doing that because you can't. All it is is saying that, look, I've messed up and now I no longer want to mess up. And, and, and I want to change and I want to act and behave in the way which God has asked us to do, behave. Does that make sense? Okay? So as you guys have those, the, your, your planks, right? As you're writing all your sins on it and, and all these things, it, it's, it's to actively recognize that, to confess that, right? But to do what? To no longer do that, right? You're like, oh, hey, I ran out of wood because, uh, you know, I just keep doing this. No, it, it's, 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 it's no more. I, I don't want this anymore. My, my, my palate has to change. My, 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 the way that I behave has to change. Does, does that make sense to you guys? Okay. All right, so yeah, I just wanted to clarify that unless you guys just say, oh yeah, it's just, it moves into this senseless repetition of my bads. Infinite, I'm sorry, right? But then never really meaning it, okay? Now, uh, before we begin today, um, did you guys have any questions? Did you guys have any questions? Anything that you guys wanted to ask? Anything you needed for further clarification about? Um, okay. Okay, don't be shy. All right. All right. So hopefully you guys will warm up to me and you guys can ask a little more questions um, uh, later on. Uh, so let, let me ask you guys some questions. Okay. Uh, Yesterday, when uh, Pastor Victor talked about this, right, what was the original theme of this retreat before it became no compromise? Yes. Back to basics. Back to the basics. Okay. That was bad. <laughs> it's not aerodynamically fit for flying. Right? Um, I'm not going to fling it. It's going to hurt someone. All right. Um, Okay, so let me ask you one more question. Uh, what, without looking, what was the passage we preached on? Raise your hands. Okay, Matthew 7, what did, are you not allergic to peanuts, are you? You want know M&M's or Snickers? You don't know? Uh, yellow or... Off-white. <laughs> Off-white. All right, there you go. You're supposed to catch it. It's not going to fly into your hand. Okay, all right, we'll save this for later, all right? Um, okay, so last night, yesterday, we looked at the aspect of repentance, right? Yes? Yes? All right, did you guys have spend some time repenting, spend some time getting right with God? Right, that we would start retreat on the right foot. Right? Because it, 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 th this is the thing. If we haven't spent time before God, we haven't spent time re repenting. How can we hear God's word? How can we really, really let God's word fall onto good soil? Right? If we haven't dug up all the rocks and, and sort of cleared our heart, how can God's word take root? How can God's word not only take root, but bear much fruit? Okay? Um, 
don't know if you guys still do. Do you guys still do the stand in the back if you're falling asleep a little? Okay, my church, we, we, we instituted this, and it works wonders. If you're falling asleep, please stand in the back. The reason why I say that is this. God's word is important enough where you stay awake to hear it. Not my words, okay? Because if you guys know me, I speak a lot of nonsense sometimes. So actually, most of my congregation will say, don't believe anything I'm saying unless I'm preaching. Right? And I'm preaching right now. And so what I would want you guys to do is this, that you would have enough humility to say, I'm falling asleep, but God's word is important enough for me that I'm going to stand up in the back. And it might be embarrassing at first, but you're telling everybody else that I love God's word enough to actually stay awake. So if you pretend like you're awake, you're like, oh yeah, I'm really praying real hard. Right? <laughs> that does you no, that doesn't benefit you at all. Right? Then, then it doesn't help you. But if you're willing to put your pride down, and, and you won't get punished for this, no one will make fun of you. They shouldn't make fun of you. Because you're saying, you know what? I don't care about my pride. I want to hear God's word, but I'm really falling asleep. Because some of those guys are like chainsaws last night. Like, <laughs> and, 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 and so, so you're falling asleep. I understand that. And you need to stay in the back. Stay awake because the messages are important. Okay, guys? Got it? All right? We're not just throwing stuff together. It's very important. And I'm tweaking and altering it because I don't really know you guys. If I was preaching to the young adults, all right, I would just hammer them because I know them. I don't know you guys. And I don't want to scare you guys. But I need you guys to feel the weight of God's word, and I want you to stay awake for it. Okay? So, if, you know, usually by, like, our, our retreat, by the last night, or by the last morning, half the guys are in the back. But I respect that because you're saying, I don't care about my pride. I want to finish hearing God's word. Now, if you fall asleep, can't hear it. That's a pretty amazing skill. <laughs> and I will allow it. Right? Um, but yeah, so if you see someone that's just kind of nodding off, just give them, like, hey, go stand in the back because this is important. God's word is important. My words, doesn't matter. All right? I've been talking a lot and you guys will hear a lot, but it's not about me. Okay? So. Um, yesterday, as uh, we saw this, that um, we had to repent. We had to get right with God, right? But, but the, the question goes, how do we get to this point? How do we get to this stage where we began to compromise so much? How do we get to this stage, that, to this point that we actually came to retreat and we still had lots of unconfessed sins? That we came to retreat and yet our hearts weren't in the right place, right? That, that, that the gospel of Jesus Christ wasn't the first and most important thing about us coming to this retreat. How do we come to this point of compromise? How did these ideologies ever bleed into our relationship with God, right? How, and, and this is the thing. How, we've let these ideologies and concepts that are coming from the world actually direct and change the way that we're supposed to be operating, the way that we're supposed to be behaving as Christians. And some of you guys right now, you're saying, I haven't done that. Right? You have not, you, you really, are you really saying that you have not allowed the ideologies and the concepts of the world to distort, to pollute your understandings of scripture? We have. We have. As Christians, why do I say that? We know that lying is wrong, right? We know that lying is wrong, yet we lie. You know, stealing is wrong. You say, well, everybody lies. Well, I don't steal. You've ever copied anyone's homework? You've stolen work that's not yours. You've stolen work that's not yours. That's stealing, right? But you see how subtle that is? Well, everybody does it. So you literally said that Christ and Scripture says... Thou shalt not steal. Oh, but if everybody does it, that's okay. Hasn't the concepts and ideologies of the world been steep, slipped into our mindset? Those of you that drive, right? If you drive over the speed limit, you've literally broken the law. Oh, but it's okay. I'm going with the flow of traffic. Is that what scripture said? The laws only apply if there's a police officer. Do you see how subtle Satan works? 
In these little things, we begin to undermine God. In these little things, we, 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 we buy into these, these ideologies and the concepts of the world. Well, well, I'm not really stealing that movie. I'm borrowing it. Really? Oh, I didn't download it. I'm just live streaming it. Come on. Now, you're laughing and smiling because that's the thing. We forget that these are the ideologies of the world that have what? Literally bled into the lives of of God's holy people. That we have literally borrowed these concepts and have, adopt, and, and have adopted these concepts and these concepts have superseded this. God's living work. Now, so that's, that's, this is what we're going to address today, right? Like, what we're trying to do is this, that we have to go back, we have to remember what it means, what being a Christian is really about. And some of you guys right now, if you're in college or if you're in high school, um, you know, some of you guys, even right now, you're thinking, you know what, what's, uh, why, why make things so serious? Right? I mean, what's wrong with a little light party? Right? I mean, it's just alcohol, right? Or, or whatever it is. You guys might not even be drinking. You guys, this day and age, you know, well, what's it's some recreational drug use? Oh, I, know, I know lots of friends that smoke a little weed, and they're great people. And when we let these ideologies slowly seep in, they're replacing the truths of Jesus Christ with this whole gray area. I'm saying, you guys, let's, let's go back to Scripture. Let's remember once again, what does Jesus say about these things? What does Scripture say about these things? You see how easily we've allowed the world and the concepts of the world to sort of replace our biblical foundation? And so we have to change. We have, we have to change, right? We've got, we've got caught up in all these things. We've allowed ourselves to be swept under this tidal wave of, different ideologies and we literally allowed the world to then dictate our ideologies our behavior simply because this is now acceptable i'm saying today that's not how we as christians should behave let us remember what it means to be a christian right let's let's remember what is it that that we're not supposed to be compromised all right so that's our framework. That's, what, that's the direction that we're going to head towards. We're going to pray, and then we're going to get into today's text. All right? So let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, as, as we saw last night, that you have forgiven us, that you have freed us from our sins, uh, that your master plan of salvation has been accomplished. And today, we are called sons and daughters. We are your children. Father, your great love uh, was shown to us through your son, Jesus Christ. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus, you were uh, buried after your death. And we praise the Father that you did not stay dead. But you were raised up from the grave on the third day. Showing once and for all uh, your power over death. And that all who put their hope and their trust in you now no longer walk in their own strength. But now walk in this newness of life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you uh, for convicting us of our sins. We thank you for guiding us, for leading us uh, in our daily lives. We need you. And we praise the Father, we praise God uh, that, that you are able to walk with us. We thank you, Father, for all that you've done so far at camp. Uh, we praise you for all that you will do. So teach us today, teach us your ways, that we might hear your voice more and more. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me ask you guys this. How many of you guys have played a game called Telephone? We've all played Telephone, right? I mean, all of you. What's, what's more fun than Telephone? Telephone Charade, right? Um, but why do we like playing Telephone, and why do we like playing Telephone Charades? No, you guys don't like playing it? Is this punishment? Oh, no. Why? Why, why is it a game that we play? Yeah. Yeah, and it's super funny, right? The message gets super distorted, and it's hilarious. Right? At the end, you're like, what is it? That was nothing near what we said in the beginning, because people get to interpret 
they get to add or they get to cut as they see fit. And it's funny, right? It, it, it's funny and, and because everybody gets to have a good time because the message is usually really, really outlandish at the end, right? Now, but, but let me ask you this. It, it, it's, it's fun as a game, but how many of you guys would like to go to school that way? That your teacher, your professor tells one student in the class, and then that next student has to tell the next student. And then on and on and on. And, and, it, and it goes alphabetical, right? So if you're like Wang, right? So you're like, oh, no, or, or, or Zhang. You're like, no, right? None of, us, none of us would want to study that way. Am I right? Right? Especially college students, you would not want, because you're, oh, man, what, what was the lecture? I don't know. What were you doing? Oh, I was counter-striking in class, right? Those of you in college, you guys know that. Those of you in high school, you, you guys, none of us would want to learn that way. Am I right? Because especially, especially if the test is still given by the professor, by your teacher, right? If it was given by the person that taught you, maybe, right? Because I'll just, then, you know, I'll take the test of whatever you just gave me. But if it's still, the test is still given by the professor, by the teacher, none of us would say that's a good idea. Oh yeah, it'll save, it'll save lots of time, right? It'll, it'll save lots of time and money. You don't need classroom, just... You know, the teacher will teach one student, and one student will teach the next student. It never works that way. None of us would want an education that way, right? Yes? Some of you guys would? None of us would. But this is the weird thing. Many of our relationships with Jesus Christ is telephone. We have had a telephone relationship with Jesus Christ. Many of us say, many of you guys sitting here, you guys grew up in church. Many of you guys, your parents are serving, and that's all good stuff. But when was the last time you picked up the Bible? When was the last time you studied this simply to have a relationship with Him? And we love retreats, right? Because your small group leaders do a good job. Because Pastor Victor trains you guys up to, to lead these small groups, and that's great. And we love retreat because why? Well, you don't have to dig. Right? The, 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 the speaker unpacks everything for you, and then your small group leader makes it into bite-sized portions. And so it's great. Yeah, I love retreat. I, don't, I get this relationship with God that's built off of my small group leader. That's built off of the speaker. It can't be. Why? Because when you play telephone... It always messes up at the end. But, but we do this, right? Right? Like, uh, we do this, and, and sometimes in our own lives, many of us today, we're satisfied with the second hand, third hand, fifth hand information about Jesus Christ. And so when we're challenged, when, when our friends ask us, what? Well, uh, really sure because I heard from somebody that heard from somebody that heard from somebody and our whole premises our whole relationship with Jesus is built on right you guys ever ask get asked at school why you're a Christian yes no no nobody knows you're a Christian at school that's another whole another sermon we gotta talk about right but if you're on college campus people ask you all the time People ask me all the time. I'm a chaplain at NYU. And so people, hey, I've heard there's a lot of errors in the Bible. I was like, really? Show me. Well, I've never really read the Bible myself. I just heard that there's, what? But that's the same way, right? It, it, it works, non-Christians work that way, but the sad thing is Christians do too. Oh, I heard that Jesus died for my sins. Oh, oh yeah, oh, well, can you show me where, where it says in the Bible Jesus died for my sins? Well, I just heard from my pastor. Well, where? Well, my pastor. Well, there's no passage that says my pastor. <laughs> because we don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we're not having a first hand, right? We're, we're not literally going to Jesus and seeing what he has to say. We're just getting this second hand Christianity. And when that happens, we're playing spiritual telephone. You see, this is why a retreat, this is why we say bring your own Bibles. It's not, that the, it's not that they can't pack Bibles and bring it for you guys, but we want you 
to not have a second hand. We're saying, hey, let's open up the passage. Let's read it together. Let's see what Jesus is saying to you today. So turn with me in your Bibles, Galatians. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say it again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. So here we see, let me give you some background information. The Church of Galatia, right? Uh, Galatians, right? These people from the city of Galatia, okay? Paul was astonished. Why? Because Paul had built this church. He established this church, and he told them what the gospel of Jesus Christ was about, and then he had to go somewhere else. He went to Ephesus, I believe. And then he hears news that they're, like, believing some crazy stuff. Like, how quickly this happened? How did this happen? How did you... I, he's astonished. He's literally shocked. What just happened? How did you guys believe in this crazy thing that is different than what Scripture, what Paul had taught them? And so this is a question I have to ask you guys today, right? Do we really know what we believe in? Do you really know what you believe in? If, if you went to school and someone asked you, hey, hey, you're a Christian, right? What do you believe in? Let's try that. Turn your, yes, just practice right now. Practice with the person on your left and right. What is it that you actually believe in? Go ahead. I'll give you guys one minute. Okay, was that easy? How many of you guys found that really, really easy? Okay. How many of you guys found that kind of difficult to like really like just in one short sentence tell people what you believe in? It's kind of hard, right? It, it, I mean, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but what does that mean, right? Um, and who is Jesus? What does this all mean? And so this is what we're going to look at today. We have to remember what we believe in. We have to remember what the gospel of Jesus Christ really is all about. And so what do we see, right? Let me ask you this. Do we really believe what the Bible is saying is true? And I know you guys, the Sunday school answer is yes. Well, let me throw out some challenging questions that your friends will ask. You, how is it possible that Jesus was born of a virgin? Do you really believe in that? Did this really happen? How is it possible that Jesus is fully God and fully man simultaneously? How is it that Jesus died on the cross and then was raised from the dead? You really believe that a person can be raised from the dead? Are you sure his disciples didn't just steal his body? Do you, do you really believe that if you believe in Jesus that you have new life? And why are you Christians so obsessed with eternal life? Why does it even matter? Just have a good time. See you at the end. These are, if you're talking about Christianity at school, these are the things that you're going to hear. These are the questions that are going to be challenged to you. The thing is, we don't talk about Christianity, we don't talk about our relationship with Jesus Christ because it's scary, because we don't know it well enough to take a stand for it. Because we as Christians, we, we stay... We have allowed our arrogance to, 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 to continue to build up. This, this plank that we had is huge on previous generation, their walk with God. It's built off of, right, oh, I've been in Sunday school my whole life. I know all these Sunday school answers, but none of them, they're true, but you're embarrassed to explain them because you learned that when you were in third grade. And you're not in third grade anymore, but your answers are still in third grade. 
right? God used Bible. Okay, that's our answer to everything, right? Hey, uh, so what are your thoughts on God used Bible, right? <laughs> it literally becomes a reflex move. And then we know that it's garbage. We know that it's, 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 it's something without substance. And that's why we're scared to share the gospel at school. That's why we're scared to live as a Christian very boldly. Because I don't want to get challenged. Because if I live very boldly, I will get challenged. If I get challenged, God, Jesus, Bible is not going to cut it. So we have to remember what the gospel really is. We need to have a personal relationship. We're scared because it's secondhand. We're scared because, well, I remember what Norman said, but I don't know what Jesus said. I remember what, 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 what my small group leader said. I, I remember, oh, like, uh, you know, purple team leader said, and you forgot Isaac's name. <laughs> you just laugh because that's messed up. You just forgot, right? And that's the problem. You're not saying, I remember because Jesus told, the scripture tells me. It's simply based off of someone else. And so I'm saying, you guys have to remember we got to get back. To no more compromise. I don't want a second-hand relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't want a hand-me-down Bible verse. I want to read it for myself. And then I can defend it, right? So this is, this is the gospel. The gospel is that I'm a sinner. And God sent his son to die in my place. And now I'm righteous before God. And because I'm righteous before God... I have hope in this life, today, right here, right now. And that God, the Holy Spirit, walks with me and leads me and guides me. And isn't that something wonderful and pretty easy to tell our friends? But why don't we do that? It's because we don't know it. Why don't we know it? Because it's, we're playing telephone. We haven't really taken our walk with Jesus very seriously. We've been chasing after the wrong thing, right? We've been looking at stuff that we have thought was important. Okay, so let's, let's enough of what I'm saying. Let's go back to Scripture. Let's look at verses, Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. Let's look at that first. What does Paul say? He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there's another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. Let's stop there for a moment. Right? Let's, verses 6 and 7. What is Paul telling us? Are there fake gospels out there, guys? Yeah. There's only one. He says, they're, not that there's another gospel. There's only one gospel. But there are what? There are a lot of fakes. All right, there are fakes. What, and, and why do the fakes exist? What, what does Paul say? To distort, right? Distortion and to what? And to confuse you. Distortion, confusion. Who does that sound like? Satan. Satan, right? We talked about that last night. What does Satan do? Does Satan create? No. What does he do? He distorts. He perverts what God has created. He, only, he can only twist and manipulate what God has created. And that's, this is why these false gospels are there. If we are not in a loving relationship with Jesus, a personal loving relationship with Jesus Christ, if we are not having a first-hand gospel of Jesus Christ, what happens is that we will, have, we will be distorted. We will not really know what Jesus is saying and be distortion. And there's a lot of false religions out there that tell you you need to add this. You need to, you need to have this. You need to have that. And then when you have all of these things, then you will have religion. Then you will have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why you have so many cults out there now, right? There are more cults out there today that tell you a bunch of crazy stuff. This is why if you guys have friends that are Mormons, that's a cult. Why? Because they are adding to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're not just taking it. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're adding things to it. Jehovah's Witness, right? And I always ask them, do you know Jehovah's not actually in the Bible? It's a, it's, a, it's a really poor interpretation of the word Yahweh. 
which is Germans, right? Right? So, uh, anyways, like, it's not Jehovah, it's, it's, it, but the J and the Y sound in German, Yah, right? It's the same, right? So, <laughs> Yahweh, and then it became brought to America, and we like to butcher every language, right? Um, right? Luis is tortilla, right? Not tortilla. Tor I like some tortilla, right? Um, and so we, we totally distorted that. Yahweh became Jehovah, right? And so Jehovah is just a poor interpretation of Yahweh, okay? So anyway, so I'm like, Jehovah's Witness, do you know your God's not even in the Bible? At least in the Greek and the Hebrew, right? That's not there. So who are you witnessing to? Uh, I don't know, my leader told me, right? Again, second hand. All these cults, they add all these things to it. And, 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 and the truth is that sometimes we almost become cult-like, especially if we're not simply following the gospel of Jesus Christ. We start adding our own spin to it. And this is wrong, right? We cannot and we should not do this, right? We have newness of life in Christ because of what Christ has accomplished. There's a lot of false, a lot of fake gospels out there. We've got to return to what is real. If it's real and it's genuine, you don't need to add anything to it. Now, I'm a, I, I really love to eat. I'm a really big foodie. I not only like to eat, I love to cook even more. I like to experiment with stuff. Right? And, and so one of the best foods that I've ever had uh, was barbecue in Texas. Now what happens in Texas is this. They, are, they use a, a dry rub and that's it. Right? Salt, pepper, and then they just throw it in this low heat for hours. And so the natural flavors of the beef come out. You don't need anything else. That's the genuine article. But when we go with friends for the first time, we always ask them to go, hey, hey, go ask for barbecue sauce. Right? And then they go up to the chef and they're like, hey, do you have any barbecue sauce? And they just rip that. <laughs> I just spent 14 hours cooking this and you want barbecue sauce to mask the flavor? Because if it's genuine and it's real, you don't need to add anything to it. Right? Your parents cook. Do you take soy sauce and just... Get out of my house right now. <laughs> because it's already done right. This, is, this gospel of Jesus Christ is already done right. We, got, we need to stop trying to add things to it. But the thing is, because we haven't actually read what the gospel of Jesus Christ is, so we start adding all this random stuff to it, and then at the end it's like, this is not, that is not the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Carl and I were talking this morning. I'm like, what is that that they were serving? Is it... Oatmeal? Is it cake? I went to every, almost every table asking, what is this? And then Carl gave the answer. He's like, it's a deconstructed muffin. I was like, oh my goodness, you're right. <laughs> they just took muff, like muffin mix and then they baked it instead of making them into individual cake things, right? But the thing is this, just serve muffins. When it's the genuine article, you don't need to add, you don't need to spice it, especially when it comes to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's already that good. But this is what we've done, right? Some of us have actually, we, and I know that you, it comes from a good place, but some of us have accidentally added a lot of unnecessary things to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? Some of us, we, we started to add our own understanding, our, not only our own understanding, but this is the worst part. We started to add our own preferences. I like worship this way. So anything that's not the way that I like it, that's weak sauce. Really? Really? 2,000 some years of church history, and you come along as a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 18-year-old, and you figured it all out. You and your infinite wisdom. You can immediately deem this church is bad because the worship doesn't make me feel a certain way. Really? Congratulations, you have added a whole bunch of nonsense to the perfect gospel of Jesus. Some of us will look at it from a different way. Maybe not, maybe not worship, but oh, uh, that pastor's preaching, it doesn't hit me in that, you know, that like, oh, zone. 
What does that even mean? What does that even mean? Well, the preaching is kind of weak. Really, really. So you know preaching in your infinite wisdom, in your, in your years of preaching. Do you guys see what we've done is that we've become very prideful and arrogant. Just because I, you've eaten at a nice restaurant one time doesn't make you a master chef. Just because you've eaten at a Michelin star restaurant doesn't make you a, ma a Michelin star chef. There's, not a, there's, there's a lot, a whole bunch of nonsense that we've added to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you guys see what I'm saying? And, and I know you're not doing it on purpose. I hope you're not doing it on purpose. But we, we've perverted it. We've taken something beautiful and we've tried to deconstruct it to reconstruct it for no reason. Right? And so some of us might, you know, you, okay, maybe it's not the worship. Maybe it's not the preaching. Maybe it's the fellowship. Oh, I, I need a fellowship of believers that is like constantly with me and that constantly watches over me. And, and okay, that's, that's true. And that helps. But is that what we see in Scripture, that, that this is a necessity? No, it's not a necessity, but it's a byproduct. That if I lived in humility, if I believed this, if I walked the gospel of Jesus Christ, naturally I will become part of that community. I will create that community because I'm living in submission to Jesus Christ. But I don't want to do that. I want something ready-made. Because... Following the unadulterated gospel is difficult and challenging. So we add things based off of our own preferences. And this is the weird thing and sad thing. All of those things are good. Right? If you want good worship, great. I want good worship. You want great preaching? I want true preaching. You want great fellowship? Yes. Those are all good things that, that you want great. But that's not what the gospel of Jesus Christ is about. All of those things are byproducts of the gospel of Jesus Christ. But instead of developing it and growing with it, some of you guys, and I'm calling you guys college kids out, some of us, we're, we're, we're so easily pulled aside by these campus fellowships. And that's not wrong. But, 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 as I am now much older than you guys, let me put it in a perspective that you guys will understand. College campus fellowships are great for when you're in college and campus. But how long are you on college campuses? Four years, maybe five if you change majors twice. Right? And then six if you just really like school. <laughs> Super ultra senior, right? Um, and then some of you guys might get suckered into doing grad school, right? Uh, but even when you do grad school, you might not actually be part of the campus fellowship. So that's so. Let's say let's just say four years. But how long are you supposed to be a Christian? Yeah, the rest of your life, right? So you're literally basing the rest of your adulthood and your relationship with Jesus Christ off of your four years of college. So in those four years, we isolate ourselves and we cut ourselves off from the church because, you know what, I, man, these, these bros get me. Yeah, because we're living in the same room. <laughs> man, they, man they, they really love me. Yeah, because you're on the same meal plan, so you have to eat together. <laughs> but that's not real life. You, you, you graduate, you leave, you live in your own apartment, right? You have roommates for a season, you get married, and then that's your roommate for the rest of your life. <laughs> You don't get married and then like, oh, hey, 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 uh, fellowship people, let's all live together. <laughs> no, get out of my house. Thanks for visiting. Goodbye. You might be in the same complex, right? But please move in the same complex on that building, right? That's real life. But when we isolate ourselves, when we, when we change the gospel of Jesus Christ into, oh, this ultra community, but it should be like that outside of that. And, and it's much harder when you're not living 30 feet from each other. And that's when we have to actually try. But that's what the gospel of Jesus Christ is about. It's not this super, you know, like, it is super, but it's not this, like, exclusive time club people thing. It's walking with Jesus Christ. 
and finding brothers and sisters who will walk with you. That's the unadulterated God. Right? Now, we've been talking a lot about these things. Right? And, 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 and you know, you might, I still haven't given you as an explicit, explicit, what is then the gospel of Jesus Christ? Right? And again, you guys, college kids, I'm not mad at you guys. I just want you guys to see that the church with that, it, and it's unique. So go to campus, though. Enjoy it. But never, ever, ever, ever think that that is your spiritual life. Because it's not. Because those people don't want to live with you forever. And you don't want to live with them forever. At some point, you realize, man, a hamper is really, really convenient. But right now, you guys don't get it. You just throw it everywhere. Anyways. <laughs> this is what we have to do. We have to return to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to have a first-hand relationship with Jesus Christ. We need to stop adding a bunch of nonsense and a bunch of preference to the gospel of Jesus Christ and then excluding other people from coming. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not like me. And you don't have the same preferences as me. Go to a different church. I don't see that anywhere. I literally don't see that anywhere. But we do see that, look, there's the Bible and how we're supposed to live is in accordance to the Bible. And anything contrary to that, then I don't really want anything to do with that. Because it's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. But before we get to what is actually the gospel of Jesus Christ, why do we have to do this? Why do we have to live a life that's exclusively gospel? I mean, there are a lot of people who aren't saved. There are a lot of people that kind of live this way and then they're fine. I mean, church has gone on well, and, and, and my fellowships are going great, but why do I have to go back to this unadulterated, simple gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, let's, let's read on, right? Let's read verses uh, 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9 says this, But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now uh, I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be accursed. All right? Why should I do this? Because if I don't, I'm accursed. Now, I, have to, I don't know if you guys know this. Um, I hope you guys do. Anytime the Bible repeats itself, especially in subsequent verses, it's trying to highlight and show emphasis. Okay? It's not that this guy, uh, why did he just repeat himself? It, he's trying to highlight, they didn't have bold, okay? If he could write it in bold and underline, he wouldn't. But they didn't have those things back then. It's lambskin. Have you ever seen a lamb? Dude, it's really expensive and really, really difficult. To, that's why Greek has no spacing, because they're kind of a safe space, all right? Uh, but anyways, so what's their way of Making it bold, making you realize that this is important. They repeated themselves. In this, these two verses, it just repeated what? If you preach a gospel contrary to the one found in Scripture, you will be accursed. If you and I add or take away from the gospel that we find in Scripture, we are a curse. What does that mean? Right? To be accursed means to, to have the weight of God's wrath poured out upon us. Right? That, that God is, God's wrath will be poured out upon us because God's mercy and God's love is that. Right? So to be accursed is the opposite of that. Is the, a curse is the opposite of a blessing. Okay? So this is what it means. You see, when we preach a false gospel, what happens? We send people to hell because they're believing in something that's not found in Scripture. And if we're sending people to hell because of our false message, that same punishment will come upon us. That's scary, right? That's why Scripture says what? Not many of you should aspire to be teachers because teachers are judged double. So small group leaders, too bad. They're judged double. So preach it right. So teach it right. Tell your friends right. 
Right? There's a great punishment, there's a great consequence that comes with preaching a false gospel. This is what we need to be doing and we should want to be doing. That we preach the right gospel, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Not that's anything different. Okay? Some of us, you know, I, I want to throw this in there. Some of you guys are actually on the opposite end of the spectrum. You're not even saying like, hey, be like me. You're not saying, oh, do this, do that. Someone's on the opposite end of the spectrum are saying what? Do whatever you want. Because God's going to forgive you anyways. That's also false. Right? It's not everybody goes to heaven. Only those that believe and live out this belief are the ones that show that we actually believe, right? Like I said before, your beliefs, your belief system, your belief system directly correlates with your actions. So if you say you believe in Jesus, your actions will prove that you believe in Jesus. I'm going to give you a simple example. You believe that that chair that you're sitting on right now would hold, on, would hold, your, hold up your weight. So you sat down on it without question, right? So your belief, your beliefs was directly translated into your actions. Does that make sense? So if you say you believe in Jesus, let your actions show that you believe in Jesus. This is the sad part. Many of us have more faith in the chair that you just sat in than Jesus Christ. Some of you right now are worried about where you're going to go to school next year. Some of you guys might be worried about where the money's going to come from. Some of you guys might be worried about what you're going to do in the future. If, you, if Jesus is your Lord and your Savior, meaning he's in charge of your life, he's saved you from your sins, is he going to abandon you now? And this is the silly part. We say, oh God, I trust my eternity to you. What's 80 years compared to eternity? So let's return to this. Let's, let's, let's preach and live this pure gospel of Jesus Christ. And stop adding things or cutting things as we see fit. All right, so we've talked a lot about following the gospel and it was not to add, not to take away, but just what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? I'm going to teach you guys, as Paul shows us, in three short phrases, okay? And your small group leaders are going to test you and grill you until you know these short three phases. Okay, phrases, not phases. Phrases. Okay, so turn with me. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to look at verses 1 uh, through 4. 15 verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to quiz you randomly. If you get it right, I may give you candy. If you get it wrong, I may punch you. Because <laughs> you're really smart. It's only three short phrases. Okay, maybe I won't punch you, but I'll have Victor punch you. <laughs> All right, so let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believe in vain. So all of this he's saying what? Like, hey, this is what you're supposed to be building your life around. This is what you're supposed to be standing on. This is the hope that you're building your entire relationship with Jesus Christ on. What is it? Beginning with verse 3, he says, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. So this is it. That Christ died for our sins in accordance with Scripture, with, uh, with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. That's it. Is that hard? Let's, 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 okay, so what's the three? Well, the first is what? Christ died on the cross in accordance to the scriptures. Now, that's very important. Because I, it is, Christ didn't die on the cross according to me, but accordance, in accordance to the scriptures. Okay, let's try number one again. Christ died in, uh, Christ died on the cross in accordance to the scriptures. What's number two? He was buried. What's number one? Christ died for our sins on the cross in accordance to Scripture. What's number two? He was buried. He was buried. Number three. 
He was raised on the third day in accordance to the scripture. That's it. One, two, three. Small group leaders, you guys got that? It's literally a Bible verse. So let us learn the gospel in accordance to the scriptures. Okay, it's not about me. It's not what about, about what I have to say. It's not about what Pastor Victor has to say. It's not about Pastor Sam. It's not about Pastor Victor, other little Pastor Victor, right? Uh, Robin, <laughs> Nightwing, okay? It's not about these things. It's simply about what Scripture has to say. So what's the three? Christ died for our sins. On the cross in accordance with Scripture. Okay, you guys say it now. Ready? One, two, three, go. Christ died for our sins. What's number two? Okay, what's number three? In accordance to Scripture, you have to have that. Okay? You have to have that. Because, look, this is not my words. This is the living Word of God that's telling me these things. Right? Now, again, this is, this is the condensed version. Right? This is like, uh, you know, the gospel, if you let it simmer for like five hours, and it's like this reduction. It's, this is condensed. But it, I mean, if we expanded, it would take years and upon years upon years to begin to understand the goodness and greatness of God. But now we can clearly tell our friends, hey, I'm a Christian, and this is the gospel that I believe in. That Christ came and died in accordance to Scripture. He was buried, right? And then Christ rose from the grave in accordance to Scripture. Now, if you're interested, let me tell you what Scripture says about you. What an easy segue to share with others the love and the truth of Jesus Christ. Right? That's it, right? This is the only thing that we are supposed to be holding on to. So all those other things that we tried to add to the gospel, great preaching, is that important? As long as it preaches this. Honestly, I, I was at a, a conference, and in my, uh, a youth conference, and in my arrogance, I was like, dude, this preacher is messing it up. We had the awesome worship set. We had this... It was a, everything was just great. And I was like, this guy is like stuttering. And it's just, he's, he's losing that. And I was so mad. And then at the end, he's like, how many of you guys would like to accept Jesus Christ? And it was almost two thirds. They were up there weeping and repenting. And I had to go to the back, weep in repentance. God, I am so sorry. Because I thought that a dynamic preacher, an awesome preacher, is what would win people over. But it wasn't. It's this. Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus now lives for you. That's it. This is what saves people. Not a preacher. Another time, worship. Everything was great. But worship was, you know, like, I was like, And then God floors me. It's, it's not about that. That helps, but it's really not about that. So stop adding your own stupid preferences to my perfect word. And that killed me. That, let's just go back to what really matters. No more compromise. No more adding my own stupidity, my own nonsense. So how do we... What's the kicker to all this? How do we ensure ourselves? I know you guys are tired. We're almost done. How do we ensure ourselves that we are walking right? What's the, what's the, what's the in-between? What's, what's repeated? In accordance to Scripture. We have to know God's word. We simply have to know God's word. And I end with this. Uh, I have a friend. His name is Luke Shin. He's now as a pastor. He's a pastor. He's a really good friend of mine. Um, he was in the FBI uh, for 20 years. After 20 years, you can get uh, retirement. You work, that's why. I get a government job, man. 20 years, full pension, right? Um, and then you can do whatever you want. So he became a pastor. And so he actually, in the FBI, he actually worked with uh, counterfeit, right? Um, uh, you know, sort of like a, not like, uh, he was working with counterfeit bills. And so he said the entire time that uh, they were in training. The entire time, he's like, I, I never touched a single fake bill during training. 
Not a single counterfeit bill. He, he did not, he's like, I don't know what it looked like. I don't know what it, it didn't matter. But they just made them carry around a giant wad of cash. They, they, all day, they were just touching it. Whether, and so in certain days, they would soak it in water. So they would know what a real dollar feels like when it's wet. Other days, it came right out of the dryer. So they'd know what a real dollar feels like when it's crispy. Right? Other days, drawn on. Other days, they would give them stacks of the, you know that the U.S. dollar is printed on this cotton blend? It's not just paper. It's like, if you look at it very close, there's like fibers on it. So it's, like, it's a cotton blend. So they would just give them unprinted sheets of cash. Why? They had to know what the genuine article felt like. So the smell, the touch, the taste, in any condition, he could tell if this was a real cotton blended piece of paper, that's what the US dollar is printed on. And so anything that was contrary, he immediately knew was fake. He didn't learn, oh look, there's a thousand different types of cattle. No. Once he knew what the real deal was, everything that didn't come in line with that was automatically fake. This then is how we should if our lives, if we know scripture, if we're building our lives in accordance with scripture, and this is what's real and what's genuine, anything that's contrary to this, we immediately know that it's fake. We know that it's success. So how do we, what, what do we do from here? Small groups. Here's the questions I have for you guys. First question you guys have to ask is, have we been, uh, have we, have we simply than receiving a second-hand gospel? Is our relationship with Jesus Christ second-hand? Right? Have we been simply having a second-hand gospel? Next thing, have we added or taken away from the gospel of Jesus Christ? Our church, you have to dress a certain way. If you don't dress a certain way, sorry. It just shows that you're not a good Christian. I mean, it might be true, but that's not the criteria. Right? Me judging and condemning might also be a sign that I'm not a good Christian. Right? Okay, so have we added or taken things away from the gospel? Uh, next, uh, have we... Uh, what, uh, next is, uh, what is the condensed gospel that Paul tells us? Wait, did I go over? Yes. You know why? Because my uh, Fitbit died, and so the time's all wrong. So I was like, oh, hey, okay, that's my bad. Uh, okay, so what is the condensed gospel that Paul tells us? So you guys have to know. What is it? Died, died according to Scripture, buried, raised on the third day according to Scripture. Okay, and then number four, last one. What is the best way to learn about the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is it? Scriptures, read the Bible, okay? All right, I'm sorry I went a little long. My watch tripped me. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your word. Father, forgive us of the times where we've added to the gospel. Father, forgive us of the times where we've taken away from the gospel, uh, that we didn't take it as seriously as it should have been. Father, forgive us of the time that we were satisfied with the secondhand gospel. Help us today that we would rekindle our love for you through learning more and more about scripture. Help us that we would preach the real gospel as found in scripture and in scripture alone. So we thank you and praise you for all that you've done. Uh, be with us during small groups. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.